In this video, you're going to get comfortable and confident with the word instead. You're going to learn exactly how to add this to your vocabulary so you can form complex sentences that will help you sound advanced in English. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. In this video, you're going to learn how to use the word instead. And you can thank one of your fellow students, Neaton, because he requested this video. Now, I'm glad he did because this is going to help you sound really advanced in English. So let's talk about instead. First of all, you need to know that this is an adverb. And what does this mean? Well, we use instead when you're offering an alternative. Now, you could think of this as substituting one thing with another thing. That's when you would use instead. I think the meaning is quite simple and it will be clear once you hear the example sentence. The meaning is quite simple. What I think you'll need to practice and pay attention to is the placement of instead in your sentence. And that's because instead can come at various parts of your sentence. And depending on where it is, it might also change a little bit the rest of the grammar of your sentence. So that's what we'll be focusing on the most. So let's talk about when instead comes at the end of a sentence. This is the most common usage. When you'll see instead is at the end. So remember, because we're using this as an alternative, so we have this, but we, we don't want this. We want an alternative or as a substitute. So we don't want this. We're going to substitute it for this. Because of that, we always need two things. The two things, it doesn't matter what they are. They can be a something, any noun. They can also be an action as well, a verb. So we can change those. So I'm going to use a simple example. And I'm going to use the same example so you can really understand how sentence structure changes using the same two things. So like I said, let's start with looking at instead at the end of a sentence. So our two things are going to be walking and driving, okay? So my example sentence is, you shouldn't drive. So we have our one thing, drive but I'm saying you shouldn't drive. You should walk, okay? So that right there is a grammatically correct sentence. I could just say you shouldn't drive, you should walk. And I could just put a period, end it there, call it a day. Now, what a native speaker is going to do, because we have these two things, and I'm suggesting an alternative to driving, or a substitute to driving, which of course is walking. Because of that, I'm just going to add instead at the very end, simply because that's the use of instead with an alternate. And that's the exact thing that's happening in my example sentence. You shouldn't drive, you should walk instead. Notice, just add it in at the end. You shouldn't drive, you should walk instead. Now, just adding that one word, although your sentence would be grammatically correct without it, adding that one word just gives you that extra level of fluency, helps you sound more natural and helps you sound more advanced. So in this case, we have item one, the alternative, which is item two, and then we're adding instead at the end. You shouldn't drive, you should walk instead. Now, in this case, both of the items were offered in one sentence, but it's going to be common that maybe you say something 
and I want to offer an alternative to what you say. So you're going to suggest item one, then I'm going to suggest item two. But in this case, I'm still going to add instead at the end, okay? At the end of my sentence, because my sentence is connected to your sentence. So you could say, I think I'm going to drive. And I could say, you should walk instead. Hmm, I'll say that again. I think I'm going to drive. You should walk instead. So notice we still have the two things, driving and walking. It just so happens that one person is making the suggestion and the other person is offering an alternative. But you can still add instead right at the end. Now, let me tell you another way you could form this. And pay attention because we're going to be adding a preposition as well. So, let's say that you said, I'm going to drive, okay? So you said, I'm going to drive. Now, I can offer my alternative and I can say, you should walk. Now here, I'm going to add my instead, preposition, and then a gerund verb. Now, my gerund verb is going to be your action. It's going to be the action I'm suggesting an alternative to, a substitute to. So that's going to be, you should walk instead of driving. Instead of driving, okay? You should walk instead of driving. So notice what's happening. In this case, when I include the action, that's a verb, after instead, I need to include the preposition of. Because I'm using a preposition, my verb that comes next is going to be in the gerund form. You should walk, that's my alternative, that's my substitution. You should walk instead of driving. Driving was your original suggestion, and I'm offering the alternative to it. Now, finally, you can also begin your sentence with instead of. Instead of driving, you should walk. Instead of driving, you should walk. So notice here, I'm still using instead of and my gerund, but after that, I'm offering the alternative. So in this case, the original suggestion comes first, and then my alternative or my substitute comes next. So basically, in these two sentences, I'm simply changing the order of the two items, which one is mentioned first, and that's going to determine the rest of the sentence structure. Now, one final sentence structure that's common with instead. So again, let's imagine that you said, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna drive to the party. So you've identified the item and I'm going to offer an alternative or a replacement. But I'm not going to repeat what you said because you just said it, right? It's clear, it's obvious. Now, I'm going to say, instead, you should walk. Instead, you should walk. So notice here, I'm just not repeating it because it's obvious based on context. All right, so those are all the common sentence structures using stead. We covered them quickly here. I definitely suggest that you review this video and go through each one Pause the video, write your own example sentence using that sentence structure. Use two different items as well. And that way you get really comfortable with all the different sentence structures possible for one adverb instead. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4isenglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.
All right, awesome job with this video. You're learning some pretty advanced sentence structures here. So take your time, review it, do your practice exercises and put them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe as well. Can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.